So I'm here at a four-star hotel in uh, the coastal city of Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. And if that seems like an odd place to be spending time during a global pandemic, it is not what I had planned. Yeah. Basically, I left Saudi Arabia at the beginning of March to go on a vacation to um, visit some family in Los Angeles. And at the time, it didn't seem like it was gonna be that big of a deal to travel, the, you know, COVID, you know, 19 crisis hadn't yet reached the pandemic level. It did really rapidly get worse and so I changed my flight and I rushed back to Saudi Arabia you know a few days ago and um, I was coming on a flight to London and then while I was in the air to London uh, in transit the kingdom shut its borders. Um, you know they were saying all flights need to arrive before 11 a.m. tomorrow. I had a flight that was supposed to arrive the night before but it was cancelled. I ended up getting rebooked on a Saudi Airlines flight that was, from what I can understand, really one of the last flights to arrive from London. Um, and we were under the impression that when we arrived, we would be going into a self-imposed home quarantine. So I had prepared for that, did not expect to be put into a forced quarantine because at the time they weren't um, saying that that was a measure that they were taking, um, certainly not for people coming from the US or the UK. And we got into the arrivals uh, hall and they were kind of scanning people for fever with a wand type implement, holding it up to their head. Um, we passed through that and we thought, okay, we're going to go through the fever scan. Um, we went to immigration, we went through immigration as normal. And then the first sign that something was really um, off uh, was when the immigration said, okay, everybody turn around. And they were sending us back from immigration into the same arrivals hall we had come from, which was very crowded at that point. It was pretty chaotic. And we weren't sure what was going on. We, there were health ministry employees. And finally, it took some time, but somebody told us, look, you're all going to hotels in um, Jeddah and Mecca. Um, and that was when things really got chaotic, because of course you can imagine, you know, a whole flight of people, you know, um, there were thousands of people coming in on these different flights and all of them being told, actually, <laughs> you're not going home. So there were a lot of emotions, people were shouting, people were crying, you know, there was, people were quite upset, but basically they were just hurting us, hurting us, hurting us onto buses and like, go, go, go. Um, there wasn't, it was very um, chaotic, there wasn't really like a system to sort us or to take down our information or, um, you know, our, where we had come from, where we were going. So basically all our luggage got stuck at the airport and lost, which was one of the reasons why it was really difficult the first few days of the quarantine because we just all had what we had come in with on our backs, which was, in my case, a very dirty outfit that I had been wearing for about two days straight um, and, you know, just a few personal items in my um, carry-on. Uh, so. When we arrived at this hotel, then we were separated and some distance was put between us, which up until that point, we had all been sort of just mixing um, in small spaces. And a lot of people were anxious about the possibility that we were passing the virus to each other um, in that respect. Um, but they gave us then um, at the hotel reception uh, masks and uh, hand sanitizer. And um, they began sort of doing uh, a, an intake procedure where one by one we went up, you know, we were separated with space between us and they were um, uh, taking basic information from people and asking them to sign a pledge, you know, that like, I agree to this quarantine and I will abide by its rules. And the rules were explained to us. So the cost of our stay is covered by the Saudi Ministry of Health. It is free for us. The toughest rule is that we cannot leave the room and that is very literal, not metaphorical. So it's pretty easy to get stir crazy over 14 days and you're in, you know, just a confined space. Um, the other rules uh, are basically that we need to be very careful whenever we open the door, um, because we do need to open the door to receive food, for example, to wear a mask um, and gloves so that we're not exposing any of the workers who are delivering things to us. We are told that we can get food through the room service line. Uh, they will deliver it to our rooms, um, or we can actually order from Uber Eats. And again, the reception will have somebody bring it up and deliver it to our rooms. Um, we can get laundry done in pretty much the same method by the hotel laundry service. We're also able to get delivery from um, outside. If we know people in the area, they are able to bring us items, anything that we need, whether it be basic necessities like toiletries, clothing, food, you know, care packages. That is allowed to happen in the same method. They bring it down to reception. They bring it up to us. So uh, this is night two for us in the quarantine, and. Um, it's about 2 a.m., uh, but I got a call not long ago from one of the doctors downstairs, and he was saying um, basically that um, I should get ready and they're gonna come take me um, to get some tests done. So 
One of the things that was up in the air for the first couple of days was whether or not we were gonna get coronavirus tests. Um, initially, they were telling us, look, you're only gonna be tested if you have symptoms. Um, I didn't have symptoms, but on the second day, they did say, okay, some people are gonna get tested. We're gonna test you guys. And it was very quick, very easy. And um, they took two swabs, um, a throat swab and a nasal swab, which sort of goes like really all the way up your nose into your brain. It's a little bit painful, but not that bad. And they told me that it, the results would take about four days to get. Um, the medical staff at the hospital were actually super apologetic about the way that things have been handled the first couple of days in the quarantine. They asked a lot of questions. Um, they said, look, you know, we're really sorry that you're going through this. So uh, that actually sort of started to you know, reassure me. Things have improved since those first uh, two days. You know, the doctors have called us and said, look, we're very sorry for how that went. We know it's a difficult situation. This is new for all of us. Um, you know, we're doing the best that we can. There's a ton of people who came in suddenly at the same time. It's been difficult to manage. Um, so other people I've talked to in other quarantines said they've had a similar experience where it was really difficult first couple of days and then things did start to get better. So it's day seven here in the quarantine for me. And over the last few days, the Saudi Ministry of Health has actually announced that more than 50 people in quarantines like this one have tested positive for COVID-19. They said that that proves the effectiveness of the quarantine in combating the spread of the virus domestically. As I speak, the total number of reported cases in the kingdom is about 400, and that's out of a population of about 30 million people. I still haven't received my test results. However, it does take time and I am feeling quite healthy. So I'm pretty reassured at this moment. Um, the health ministry has said that other cases um, from the new ones have come from people continuing to attend weddings and funerals and other family gatherings despite warnings from the government about that. There's talk right now of potential curfew or total lockdown um, if that continues to be an issue. Now, last night, the Saudi health minister actually had a press conference in which he discussed um, the quarantines, among many other issues. He said they have over 4,000 people um, quarantined right now. Um, he was asked about the conditions and he said, it is perhaps a new experience for us and that, you know, it, there would have been some suffering in the beginning for some people and that they have made the conditions better now and that they're keen to provide the best services possible. 